Our next film is October Sky. The heartwarming story of a 17-year-old science buff living in a small West Virginia coal mining town in 1957. His father wants young Homer Hickam to work in the mines, but Homer has his eyes on the skies. The Russians have just launched the first Earth-orbiting satellite, Sputnik, and Homer wants to build rockets, too. His first attempt is not what you'd call a soaring success. Should we get behind something? Homer keeps trying, though, and to help him along, makes friends with an outcast nerd named Quentin. Better get started. I quit. Eventually, two other boys are enlisted in the project, and just as the U.S. space effort suffered many calamities during its first years, so do these amateur rocket scientists fizzle and fail in their efforts to get one up. It's headed for the mine. I told you we didn't know what we were doing. Homer is discouraged at every turn, but he keeps finding the will to continue. Finally, when he's given up all hope and gone to work in the mines himself, he gets words of encouragement from his devoted teacher, Miss Riley, played by Laura Dern. You're not supposed to end up in those mines. You know why? Because I think you made other plans. I want you to know something. I'm proud of you. Just as surely as Homer is aiming for the stars, director Joe Johnston and writer Louis Kolick are aiming for the heartstrings of the audience. With a vengeance, they pluck them like mad. Much about the movie is pat and predictable, and you know that when one crisis is surmounted, another one will loom, and then another, and then a really big one in the final third of the movie, when Homer's chances of success seem really crushed. But even if you see every turn of plot coming as if it were preceded by one of those curve-in-the-road signs, <laughs> this movie can still get to you. It certainly got to me. I broke out in goosebumps. Not as many times as I was supposed to, I think but enough to make the movie a satisfying, if way over long, emotional experience and to earn it a slightly reluctant thumbs up. I felt a lot of fondness for this movie too, and I'm an exact contemporary of Homer Hickam. So when Sputnik was up there, I was in my front yard with my binoculars and I was reading Rockets, Missiles, and Space Travel, the book by Willie Lay. I read that about four times. I never built any rockets though, because I was a complete washout when it came to science and math. But the story is interesting because these kids are really trying to send up this rocket in a town that says you should have no ambition except to go down in the mine. And right. even Homer's father is telling him the same thing. You're a miner. You're not a rocket scientist. The symbolism is quite obvious, but it works. Go down or go up. Yeah. And there's a wonderful little scene, a shot, of, of when he finally has to go work in the mines and the elevator's going down and he looks up and sees Sputnik go mm -hmm. over and, and I thought that was a, just a lovely, lovely mm -hmm. shot. In fact, I would have liked more lovely imagery and less talking. But I think we ought to give credit to this, to this kid, Jake Gyllenhaal, who mm -hmm. plays Homer. He, he was so unactorly an actor. Mm -hmm. I don't mean he was a bad actor. I mean, he just seemed so yeah, real. Natural. Yeah. And it is a, apparently a true story. I mean, there really is a Homer Hickam, and he really works for NASA. We don't want to give away too much. But at the end of the film, you find out in American graffiti style what happened to, um, to other people. The one thing I think that irritated me about the picture was all the rock oldies on the soundtrack. And I wondered if they almost well, hadn't been added later. Yeah, that's standard. I know it's standard. And I know now that in movie ads they say, come and hear this music, as if you couldn't go out and buy an, a record if you want. Yeah, well, that's what that you're music. supposed to do is go out and buy the album. Why did we need all of those rock oldies? I guess, as you say, enough to make an album to plug the movie and vice versa. Sell those records. Okay, later in the show, high school girls become unintentional killers in Jawbreaker. She's so evil. And she's only in high school. Coming up next, Rosie Perez is the 24-hour woman. You are going to love being pregnant. It makes you feel bloated.